we've got Sammy Halbert on for the first time on the next Moto Champion Talk Show, brought to you by Yoshimura. Welcome to the Next Moto Champion Talk Show. I'm your host, Danielle Teal. The latest issue of Next Moto Champion Magazine featuring World Superbikes Johnny Ray is out and available for your downloading pleasure. This month features Johnny Ray, the Instagram page, product spotlights, and much more. And the best part is, it's free. We're gonna start the show off by wishing a very happy 21st birthday to one of the OGs of the NMC, Garrett Gerlov. Some of you may remember him from one of the very first issues of Next Motor Champion Magazine, and now Garrett Gerloff is all grown up. He recently posted a pic on his Instagram page that said, it's not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. We think you, Garrett, are conquering all sorts of things, including that mountain. He's sitting on top of the points right now in the Moto America Supersport Championship, going into the final round at New Jersey Motorsports Park. And we just wanted to wish him a very happy birthday and best of luck going into the final round. Speaking of Moto America, they're on a break right now. We'll return September 9th through 11th for the final round at NJMP. So just in case you've forgotten, let's refresh your memory on the point standings. Moving on to AMA Pro Flat Track, coming off the Charlotte Half Mile, and it was once again Jared Meese who took first place, followed by Brandon Robinson and Kenny Kulbett Jr. Meese took the win after making an aggressive pass on this week's guest, slamming Sammy Halbert, and now sits just a few points ahead of Brian Smith after round nine. This week, we've got Sammy on the show to talk about recently swapping teams and his 2016 season so far. And because he's a first timer, we're gonna play a quick game of Q&A to learn a little more about him. But before we get to Sammy, we have a great Charlotte recap video courtesy of Thunder Multimedia. for you on the other side of this commercial break.
we're back and our very own John Boucher was invited to the Tale of the Dragon for a first ride on the FZ-10. Watch this. So after a amazing day uh, at Deals Gap here riding the uh, Tale of the Dragon, we're looking at the FZ-10. And you know, I was trying to figure this thing out, and, and one of the things you have to keep in mind is that the market itself, it used to be a lot of sport bike and very few upright risers is what I like to call it like this. But as the as years have gone on, we're getting more like 75%, 25% to those sport bikes. And what's happened is this bike, and you have to compare it to the R1 because it's basically in so many ways what it is. It's the R1 engine, it's the R1 chassis, there's so many things like that R1. And basically, think about your R1 growing up and having a couple kids and getting a career and moving on and and it's matured in life and, and that's really what this uh, FC10 is. It's made things easier, it understands what it's like to be 10 years older, you know the bars make it easier, it's not as hard on your wrist, the traction control on the fly is going to make your life a lot easier as well. Everything from switching to different modes to cruise control which you, you may not have had before. So everything for this bike I think it's very purpose built for a, a specific generation. I don't think you're going to see a ton of 16 or 18 year olds on this motorcycle. I think you're going to see guys who had R1s in your in, in your 20, you know, in your early 20s, 20, 25, 30s and then now your late 30s and, and early 40s. This is the type of motorcycle that you're looking for. It's a blast to ride. It has all the power handling, amazing suspension, everything that you need, but it's just a little bit easier. And like I say, compared to the R1, it's a little bit more mature. It's a great bike. It comes in around right under 13,000 at 12,999. But I mean, just to ride it today, it's very forgiving. There were a couple times where I made some mistakes and it was easy to recoup and cover from. The bike itself coming in, I love third gear on this thing. I mean, you can pretty much ride just about anywhere in third gear. You come in, if you're just a little bit low, it'll pick right back up. Basically, the whole deal's gap was spent between third and fourth gear. It's great on the top end, too. We got a little bit of highway time, which was really nice. For the most part, I mean, it's just a great all around. I can see this as a commuter. It's sporty enough, it's fast enough, it still has guts, but it's definitely, you know, that, that brand new FC10 from Yamaha that everybody's been waiting for. It's awesome. So check it out. And now let's go back to John Boucher for this week's Product Spotlight. So this week's Product Spotlight, we're taking a look at not one, not two, but three of the most modern, cool-looking, race-focused products from the innovators at Driven Racing. Mostly known for their sprockets and chains, Driven Racing has been based out of Chatsworth, California since 2005. Sprockets and chains quickly evolved into an entire line of technologically advanced products with a strong emphasis on design, innovation, and attention to detail. All three of these are prominently displayed in the Driven Racing rear sets. You're looking at the race-inspired TT model, which features the best components to achieve simplicity and efficiency on the racetrack. This kit comes with all the necessary hardware to set your bike up for either standard or reverse shift with no modifications. If your bike requires an exhaust bracket, your kit will come with one. These Driven Racing TT rear sets also come equipped with the latest and greatest version of their foot pegs, which means that you're going to be getting the aggressive grip of the GP Ultra. Depending on your motorcycle, there may or may not be an option for these colored foot plates. If you get that option, you have five different colors to choose from. Speaking of options, there's six different mounting positions, up to 32 millimeters up and 32 millimeters back from the starting position. Another impressive feature is the adjustable folding toe pegs on the shift and brake pedals. Last but not least, the ultra lightweight design is made right here in the USA from 6061 billet aluminum. These driven racing TT rear sets are a game changer. For around that 460 mark, you can improve your body positioning and handling by installing a serious piece of racing equipment to your motorcycle. Next up is a D-axis lever guard. Like the TT rear sets, this lever guard is machined from 6061 built aluminum. There are three points that can be adjusted so you can put this guard exactly where you want it to be. There's the bar end that will move up or down. The sliding arm allows you to bring it in closer or push it out further depending on the size of your hand and gloves and the color-coded end piece is adjustable as well. This breakaway tip comes in different colors and will help avoid bikes and riders from becoming attached after a collision. This guard is designed to fit most OEM bars as well as aftermarket handlebars and clip-ons. 
There are five separate mounting options included in each kit. And if needed, a bike-specific adapter is available in Driven's bar-in section of DrivenRacing.com. This high-end, high-quality lever guard is essential to your safety, and you're gonna find it around that 150 mark. When I'm out for a ride, I hate fumbling with my keys when it comes time to get gas, and this is why I love the Halo fuel cap. The Halo gas cap system is the first product in the Halo family. The cap, which comes in five different colors, including stainless steel, is sold separately from the base. This base will provide a lower surface area and a 30% weight reduction versus most stock gas caps. It has a self-contained venting system, which means there's no need for a tube. When you add the base and the cap together, you're gonna find this awesome looking and performing piece of equipment for around that 160 mark. All right, so now you've seen Driven's TT model rear sets, the D-axis lever guard, and the Halo gas cap, but that only scratches the surface. To see their entire line of products, go to DrivenRacing.com. And that's this week's Product Spotlight. So we've given away a Speedway Motorsport Shelter, two sets of Bridgestone tires on last month, and American Cargo Backpack. This month, we have a cap it cover and helmet dryer for one lucky winner. All you have to do is sign up for the weekly newsletter at the front page of nextmotochampion.com, and the winner could be you. Good luck. Next up, we have AMA Pro Flat Track top contender and first timer on the Next Moto Champion talk show, slamming Sammy Halbert. Don't go away. <laughs> Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made-in-the-USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. Find them all at Woodcraft-CFM.com. K&N Performance Air Intake Systems. For more airflow in, more horsepower out. Guaranteed. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. Geico Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Swing and a miss. And we're back, and he's one of the most popular racers in AMA Pro Flat Track. He recently switched teams and is now a member of the Weeblers Harley Davidson Racing Team for the remainder of 2016. He's here to talk about the big switch and more. He's the number 69 slamming. Sammy Halber, welcome to the show. Thank you. Absolutely. Glad to have you here for the first time ever. Um, so let's talk about the most recent news with you, your big switch to the new team. Um, you said yourself that it wasn't ideal to switch midway through the season, but it was a necessary change for you. So tell us about it. Yeah, it kind of came as a surprise, really. Um, you know, I started the year out really good, winning Daytona on my Yamahas, and then um, had the points lead for a little bit there. Um, but when we got to the mile tracks, there was kind of some – some weaknesses that were were really evident in in the program of um, the team I was riding for. And it was it was painful to watch my points league go away, and so I was really just trying to kind of plan for next year to um, whether it was with that team or not to not be in that situation again to where we kind of came in prepared for the miles and and had the horsepower we needed and stuff. So I was trying to plan for that and and figure something out for that. And in that process, um, they just decided to drop me suddenly like during the middle of the week um so really kind of caught me off guard with that but was uh super fortunate to have weebler's harley davidson there to um to pick up the slack and uh provide me with some harleys to finish out the year on well talk about that then because i read somewhere that it was a chemistry thing so it did sound like it was more of a mutual agreement between the two of you guys to part ways but you're saying that it happened suddenly so talk about um having to cope with that i guess at that point yeah, like I said, it was just a total surprise to me. I was I was trying to plan something for next year, and and um, and they just cut the cord on me. So 
Um, so it was like, what do I do next? And just started reaching out to people. Luckily, I still have some of my own Harleys as kind of like a, a fallback, fallback, but um, don't really want to have to pull them out of the out of the basement and use them. It's uh, it, I've ran my own team for a lot of years. It's just a lot of work and a lot of time and money that goes into running running those Harleys of mine. So, um, so was fortunate to have an option to ride for Weebler's Harley Davidson, and and they've been good to work with so far. And um, so that's. That's been nice. Okay, so then let's talk about moving forward with this new team. Talk about the dynamic. You haven't spent much time with them. This will be your second round with them going uh, into Sturgis. So talk about the dynamic there. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, just jumping on the bikes. There's been um, some things we've, we've been finding that that need to get updated and stuff like that. Um, so, so just working through that, it's it's a little tough being mid season to really do a whole lot to the bikes to kind of. To, to more or less get them updated um so but those guys are working really hard to to do whatever they can to make the bike suit me and 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 get them up to snuff so um being mid-season they're working really hard they got the heads off the bikes right now just doing all they can to to try and get them right um and uh it, it, you know they're they're not bad by any means but there was just some things that need to be taken care of so but um i mean it was good enough for me to to be in contention last weekend in charlotte Right, and you're, you know, you start off your season perfectly at Daytona, obviously with the win. I'm sure it's rough halfway through to have such a big change in your program like this. But moving forward, it sounds like things are at least on the right track. Uh, let's talk about Charlotte. Uh, you just made your debut there with the team. Uh, you said on Twitter it was a tough weekend for you, Jared Mees. We have a great video from Flat Track Live of Jared making a really aggressive move uh, for the win, obviously at the end of the race. But talk about Charlotte and now moving forward. Yeah, so first national with the new team, um, the, the heat race went all right. I got the whole shot, and then um, and then and then Robinson passed me, and I kind of like lost some time. But then towards the end of the race, I kind of really just like figured it out towards the end of that heat race, and and kind of figured out how to make that bike work for me on that track and close the gap, which really raised my confidence level for the main event. Whole shot in the main main event, um, just about the whole shot. I took the lead on the first lap, and then felt really good out front. Led for about nine ten laps. Um, and then Jared and I went back and forth a couple times, and, um, and I was just right there, right on him. And uh, unfortunately, my chain fell off. Like I've like never had my chain fall off that I can remember. So of all times for it to fall off while battling for the win at a national, and the way like my last month is gone, it's just like every single race something's happened. With Lima, I was battling for the win and crashed, and then here I'm battling for the win and the chain falls off. It's like I just keep getting kicked in the gut but uh that's racing sometimes um you know i know it'll turn around eventually and i'm more than ready for that because i've been like working my butt off to be prepared and I, I felt so good like on the bike last weekend was uh was feeling really strong like i was ready to finish out the race strong um was about halfway in and uh wasn't feeling winded at all so i was like felt like my training really paid off and uh was super bummed to have it happen but it's just like that's racing you just got to roll with it and uh so I already kind of really turned the focus on to the next round and uh and preparing for that well maybe you're on the upside of this roller coaster of a season that you've had uh like you said you led the points for the first couple of rounds and now you're still fighting you're in fifth after charlotte but you're you are still fighting for a top three finish overall in the season so knowing this upcoming schedule you're good at all types of racetracks you're fast everywhere the miles the half miles the tts um and now you're with this new team that you might have some consistency at all the tracks like you're used to having looking ahead at the schedule what's it going to take to finish out the season top three how do you think you're going to have to approach the the last part of the season man it's like i'm taking it race by race you know i really just want to win a race like the last two week races like i talked about i was in contention for a win and and ended up not finishing so that that just really hurt me in points and stuff like that so at, at this point it's just i just want to go to, i'm just focused on the next round and want to win that and then um after that we have peoria i built a brand new 2016 yamaha 450 with a lot of support from yamaha and um and all the Yamaha dealers that helped me, Fredericktown Yamaha, Vans Yamaha, and um, that bike is really good. I have uh, I built a couple of Yamaha 450s in the past, but this one I did a little differently, and and the performance of it is just way better. So I'm Peoria has been a tough track for me, but um, I've also podiumed there before, so I know I can get it done. And um, and with this new bike, I'm I'm excited for the challenge of Peoria and trying to get get back on the box and uh, there, and then. Um, 
and then after that we have a, a new new racetrack in New York and um, typically I run well on new racetracks so don't really know what to expect for that track which usually plays out well for me and then um, and then we have a couple miles and uh, I need to, still need to find a fast bike for the miles so I haven't got anything locked down for that yet but uh, we'll see how it shakes out. Well, and hopefully you'll just continue to dial things in with your new team and things will continue to improve for you. Uh, what are the plans with the team? Is this a short-term deal or is there talks for next year yet or no, not yet? Well, I'm with them for the rest of the season, probably minus the Springfield mile because um, we've sort of talked about that. Um, their bike is, you know, probably isn't going to be a machine I can win on at the Springfield mile. It's a great half-mile bike and stuff like that. Um, so... So really just getting through this year, seeing how that goes and uh, and go from there. You know, a lot of a lot of interest from manufacturers and flat track lately and stuff. So I'm hoping kind of something shakes out and I can get a get a good deal for next year. Right. Well, we wish you the best of luck with that. We obviously wanted to touch on the latest news with you, which was the big switch. Um, Sammy, you said you've been doing a lot of training lately. What kind of training? You said you're eating clean. You've been training a lot. I saw recently you rode your bicycle from Seattle to Portland, 206 miles. No big deal. You said hashtag. Um, so tell us about what else you've been doing training. What else you've been doing in your free time that's maybe been helping with your program? Yeah, so I just mix it up with my training. Like the bicycling thing is new to me this this uh, last last year. I started doing the bicycling thing, and so that Seattle to Portland ride was my first um, like big organized uh, group ride. Like ten thousand people do it, and so it was a pretty cool experience to do that. And um, so I mix it up between riding bicycles and, and then riding motorcycles. Um, later today, I'm gonna go run flat track in my backyard, and then um, if you know, every once in a while I hit the gym, not not too often. I usually am on the bicycle or the motorcycle, and then, like, maybe once a week or so I go to the gym. Um, so mixing it up with that kind of keeps it interesting for me. And then, um, like, right now I'm staying pretty busy working on bikes as well, um, getting my 450s ready for Peoria and a couple of non-national events. So lately I'd stay pretty busy just with, like, just living the racer life, you know, working out, working on bikes and, uh, and all that stuff. But I um, like to have fun and do other things when I get a chance. Right. Well, we are right in the heart of the race season, so naturally you're focused on racing and motorcycles probably all the time. We wanted to cover the business, Sammy. We're going to hit a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit of personal with you. Don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Hi, I'm David Fisher. Briar Bauman. Brandon Robinson. Brad Baker. Corey Texter. And Kenny Coolbath. Dan Bromley. Shana Texter, and I run Evans Coolant. What I like most about Evans Coolant is I never have to worry about the bike overheating, so we're on, on the line. I uh, don't have to worry about overheating. In all my years of racing, I've never found a product that gives me the peace of mind to do what it's going to do like Evans. I run Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. Evans Coolant. And Evans Coolant. Coolant. Got to have the best to go fast. performance air intake systems for more airflow in more horsepower out guaranteed all right and we're back and we only have a few more minutes left with slam and sammy halbert joining us for the first time so we're going to do a little rapid fire q a session with sammy followed by a would you rather provided by john boucher that i will not take any responsibility for um, any of the questions sammy you up for it yep go for good. it good all right let's cover the basics first your first motorcycle PW50, of course. Of course. Favorite motorcycle? Man, uh, Harley XR750. Naturally, right now. 
Um, what's your favorite track? Why well, a half mile. Okay. Pre-race rituals. Going pee. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. No question. I don't think you're the only one who does that. Um, Non-bike related favorite thing to do. Non-bike related. Snow Snowboard. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, good to know. So now you know a little more about Sammy. Now we're going to play a little Would You Rather. Thank you, John Boucher. All right, Sammy, are you ready? I think so. Okay. Would you rather have your head the size of a tennis ball or a watermelon? Watermelon. Watermelon. Very good. <laughs> okay. Would you rather have no nipples or six nipples? I think I would go with no nipples for me, yeah. <laughs> okay, would you rather use a pair of pliers to pull out all of your fingernails or all of your teeth? Uh, fingernails, for sure. Why? <laughs> really, would you want to pull your teeth out? <laughs> I would say neither, but I guess if I had to choose. Oh, just a smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plus you need your smile, for sure. Okay, good answer. If an avalanche caused you to be trapped in a log cabin for 72 hours, would you rather be trapped in the cabin with a screaming rabid baboon or Corey Texter? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't know. Is there any other options? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Corey is not that bad. <sighs> Yeah, he's all right. I can go with Corey, I Corey, guess. Corey, good answer. Gosh, John. Okay, and your last one. If you were forced into a closet for seven minutes of heaven, would you rather be with Thunder McAfee or Hillary Clinton? Seven minutes of heaven? Is that like a game or something? It's like a kissing game in the closet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he has yeah. to think about this. Tough call, tough call. I mean, Thunder's pretty cute, but uh, I might have to go with... Hillary. <laughs> Good answer. Thunder does talk a lot, but then again, so does Hillary. Good job, <laughs> slamming Sammy Halbert. We don't have a prize for you, but I would say you're a very good sport. And we are happy to have you for the first time on the next Moto Champion Talk Show. Uh, we do wish you the best of the uh, best of luck with the rest of your season. New team, new opportunities. Hopefully, uh, the rest of your season will look up for you and you'll get back on track like you were in the beginning of the season. Number 69, slamming Sammy Halbert, everybody. Give him a big round of applause. Sammy, thanks so much for coming on the show. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Cool, sounds good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this commercial break.
Real quick, big thanks to Big E over at Yoshimura for setting me up with this shirt. It looks awesome. Thank you, Big E. And while we're at it, thanks to all of our great sponsors, including Yoshimura, for helping us deliver this great show to you each week. Check out all of our sponsors at our sponsor page at nextmotochampion.com. The final round of Moto America is set to take place September 9th through 11th at NJMP, and tickets are available at MotoAmerica.com. It's always a good time. You don't want to miss it. It's hot out there, but track day season is still going strong. Sport Bike Track Time and Into Track Days, two excellent organizations, are still running their track day schedule. Check them out at SportBikeTrackTime.com and Into Deep. TD.org to find your perfect track day. And for all you ladies out there, Sport Bike Track Girl will be hosting another ladies track day at Talladega GP in Alabama on September 5th. The full press release and more information about them can be found at nextmotochampion.com. If you don't want to miss anything from Moto America and AMA Pro Flat Track, be sure to tune in for more this season, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America, and AMA Pro Flat Track coverage. Don't forget to join the others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Join our newsletter and get this show and more in your inbox each Friday. And last but certainly not least, all of us at Next Moto Champion are supporters of our military men and women, and we're proud to support Vet Motorsports, a program that empowers veterans through motorsports. If you've never heard of them, check them out at vetmotorsports.org. Vet Motorsports, helping to heal vets through motorsports, and for that, we'd like to thank them. That's all for this week, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Ha <laughs> ha